All right, man, what's going on? How are you? I'm good. I am good. Five. Funny enough, I had a lot more free time ish over the last week but i'm i'm sure you've done this man like now that my calendar's open i had like nine no, i had 10 calls yesterday and like why 12 on monday because now there's space to say yes and i'm dumb <laughs> like, like, you got time? No. i'm like yeah you got time <laughs> yeah sure i'll catch up yeah this on thing, monday i had a jump in a 9 30 a 10 30 an 11 30 a 12 30 a 132, 230, are you doing, man? and a 430. Yeah. What are you doing, dude? I don't know, dude. I don't. I've never had this before. So I'm like, yeah, everybody. Yeah. Well, yeah, you can't even like, I have to be. I have to be. Yeah. Go golf, man. Go hey. cancel that and just go golf. I'll, hey. try, and I'll, can, I'll try to cancel my stuff. But we're golfing we're on Friday. On Friday. So. That's what we're doing on Friday. It'll be. We'll have a good time. Um, all right. What's going on, everyone? Welcome. If you're joining on LinkedIn, what's up? Um, we will drop some links. If you're ever joining on LinkedIn and you're like, hey, I don't know what this is all about. Welcome. You're in the right place um, to learn about uh, basically how to use ChatGPT, generative AI for your revenue organization. Um, I cannot find, Becca, maybe you've got the link. It's not in my CTAs. If we drop the link, if people do want to sign up, if you're joining on LinkedIn uh, and you want to sign up for the uh, Zoom so you can get like the, it'll add to your calendar. We do this every couple of weeks. You know, we've got what 40 something folks in here in the Zoom. We've got another another 16, 20 on LinkedIn. So um, you know, welcome. Uh we'll drop that in there so you can join us wherever you like. If you want to join on LinkedIn, join on LinkedIn. That's fine. If you want to join on the Zoom, join on the Zoom. Um and yeah, make sure to drop in the chat uh where you're joining us from and your role. That's kind of the uh the go-to. You know, we know who's if we know who's here, you know, who knows? Maybe you'll, I don't know, win a prize or something. We've have we ever given away a prize? You ever done that before? I don't think so. No, we should. Oh, I, let's, I, let's give away more KD's time. There yeah, we go. Yeah, I got slots. Best, I got... <laughs> best question today. Best question today gets a 30-minute consultation with Kevin okay. Dorsey. There you go. Hey. He was just volu voluntold uh, hey. that as a part of it. So this is a truest AMA. So we've got some questions that have kind of popped up. So we're going to be doing all that stuff. Uh, dr start dropping your questions for us. Be selfish. Um, that's what I always tell people. Uh, ask the question. Why not? You know, it's about you getting better, right? Um, so we'll jump into it. So a couple of things we got here, and I think I got a poll too. Uh, LinkedIn folks, you won't be able to participate, but I'll I'll show the uh, details to you. So a couple like in the news things here. Um, I, this is kind of interesting. Again, like there's this Forbes Business Development Council. Um, mm. And, you know, some of the things that they talked about, they put out an article. Dude, Forbes is like un, like, it's like unusable. Like they have so many ads. Forbes mm -hmm. is like literally how many ads can we put in one space? It is, oh my God. Yeah. And then if you use an ad blocker, it doesn't even let you get on. So now you can't you even. It's just like it used to be like being in Forbes. People are like, oh, I featured in Forbes. Now it's like anybody can be featured in Forbes. Not mm -hmm. that there's anything wrong with it. If you're featured in Forbes, good for you. you know, pat on the back there. Um, so one of the things here, this is this is an interesting one. Um, they they basically listed out here. I'll drop, let me drop the link for everyone. Mm -hmm. You can get ad bombed by Forbes too with me. Um, is they talked just a little bit about some of these use cases. And Katie, some of the ones that stood out to me um, was around, uh, one person said like restoring time for high impact sales. Like, so one of the 12 things was like, hey, that generative AI should give people more time to do more high impact uh, you know, things as well too. Yeah. So there's the article real quick for everyone. What are your thoughts on that? Is that what you think too? You know, do you feel like- um... I'll, so Meg, actually, if you missed it yesterday in the Innovative Sales like um, conference, like um, one of the panelists in the session, Meg, here's some from Rev. I think she nailed it because she used the word should. She said it should right. provide more time for these high impact sales activity. The problem is, is a lot of people aren't seeing that. It's like, okay, we got the time back, but it doesn't seem to be going over to these higher impact activities, right? right? That's, you know, it's a place where, you know, I give some people some grief when they're like, oh, well, sellers are only selling 28% of the time or 30% of the time. And it's like, well, yeah, but that would be very similar to like saying a chef is only cooking for eight minutes of the time. Like part of making a great meal is the prep. 
part of making a great meal is the, you know, the chopping, it's the things. And so I think that's where some of these high repetitions, they should, but I don't think a lot of people are seeing this time go anywhere else where it's like, oh, right. now my reps are doing more blank. I've yet to hear that. We replaced this with AI and now my reps are doing more. What? <laughs> Call right. reviews, practice demos like so i believe it should i don't think people are setting it up and meg's point was you have to give guard reps if they're getting these time back here's how you should be replacing yeah, these are these are the things that you can do or you know another way i i would even think about it this way too it's like maybe it's for the task it might not give you 100 percent of the time back but does it make the thing that you did way better right, right? especially around like outbound it's like if you were going to take 10 minutes to cut five minutes to customize something. Let's just say that. And God forbid somebody actually did that took five minutes to customize something that I'd fall out of my chair for that. Um, you know, I can get to a really good V1 and then spend the rest of the four minutes, like choo, 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 moving it versus like, Oh, I saw this thing on KD, um, toss something in there, uh, et cetera. So yeah, I, yeah, I, I, I think that's the right way. The other thing, Meg, Meg had another quotable uh, piece from yesterday. If, for those of you who don't know, uh, we had the Innovative Seller Summit yesterday, um, and if you missed out, I don't know what you're doing. Probably a lot of you have already bought the book, but if you haven't bought the book, if you buy the book now, the recording and everything is there, so you get free access to the community. I'll drop the link in there, too, for everybody. Um, not a very non-shameless uh, book plug here. We're coming down to it. Hey, do you, number, number, one sale, number one book on sales five days in a row on Amazon. Number one book. Let's go. Pre-sales, man. Pre-sales. So help me get there. Help me get there. Help me get oh, to yeah. that USA Today uh, list. I might, I might order three more right now. Why not? Just, I'd look, man. Hey, everybody take that same mindset. Just go yeah. order three more. You know, like, that's a good... you don't got three people that need to innovate how they're selling. I know. I got, hey, I, I've got 10, I know, at least. Okay. Yeah. So, all right. Well, we got that in there. Thanks, everybody. Um, but go check it out. But anyway, what Meg said is she's like, stop trying to tokenize everything, right? And that to me, like really stood out. I'm like, you know, people would just want to put in like a custom, oh, we could do this and we could do that. We could put in a custom field and then would it do this, you know, et cetera. So, you know, there's a, just right so now, much good stuff. Right stuff now, people are using AI to try to do more and they need to be using AI to do better. That yeah. is, that is what, oh, now I can do more personalization versus better. I can do more research versus better. I can do more leads versus like, you want to be using it to do it better because it got you 80% of the way there yeah. first. Now, 100% of your focus is to making it better versus spending that time trying to make it in general. So that's where I just hope people's really start to see. I'm trying to make myself better with yeah. AI, not just trying to do more things the same way. Yeah. I mean, you should, I mean, hypothetically, like I said, I think it's like, it is the only tool I can think that can, that can help us do more high quality, but the quality mm -hmm. is what we're bringing back. Right, bringing JT's got a new album back, right? He, but he didn't bring sexy back on this one. Uh, it's not bad though. I've, I've really? been getting into it. Like, I feel like you had to listen to it a couple of times. There's some songs on there. Then there's some other ones where you're like, "Oh man, you're just trying a little too hard here, JT." <laughs> uh, yeah. You know, but yeah. it's Jade still, man. He's got there's some bangers in there. There's some good. There's some good, good stuff in there. Um, all right, quick poll for everyone. When it comes to AI adoption, and this is perfect because anonymous attendee, anonymous attendee uh, posted a question, but anonymous attendee. I can't give you 30 minutes of KD if I don't know who it is. So nice. you can feel free, DM me, maybe again. <laughs> maybe your boss is on this as well too, so you don't want them to see. So poll is like, hey, when it comes to AI adoption for sales, where should companies focus first? Pretty interesting. So uh, training the sales team, setting clear rules about data and output governance, make sure tools work smoothly with other software. Uh, number one, pretty much by like, you know, 60% is training the team. I love that. I love that. Yeah, and again, I'm, I'm, my guess is, you know, we've got about 50 plus people here, 20 something uh, people that uh, responded. You know, I think it's interesting setting clear rules and about how data and outputs are used. Governance is 9% of two people. Um, I guarantee like, like, tell me like you can do like a, a sly raise of hand if you were, uh, if you're the sales leader or sales operations person uh, um, who did that and everyone else was kind of this training and then, you know, helping it integrate with other tools is a close, you know, decently close number two. Um, but yeah, I mean, whenever we, me and, you know, Katie talk to leaders and CEOs, this is, you know, we, it's kind of, it's almost flipped. It's like, 
step one is, okay, well, how could we set it up for government? Step two, how does it communicate with our other teams? And then step three is like, well, could the team actually use it? And mm -hmm. what I love about generative AI, as opposed to other sales technologies, is teams are just doing it themselves. You know, like they're just gathering the insights and just doing it themselves, like not sitting around and waiting for leadership to come up with some governance policy that's going to limit like the actual effectiveness. Mm -hmm. Another share, I got to hit share results. There we go. Okay, share results. Uh, and I think you can probably see them on, let's see if you can see them on LinkedIn too, if I hit share results. That I don't know. You can see it, right, Katie? Did yeah. You share the results? All right. I don't know if that works or not, but we'll see. Um, so we'll get into some Q&A. Again, this is a true AMA. Like I said, all you got to do is ask a question. I'm looking at LinkedIn here. I'm looking at Zoom. I need a question here. Best question, 30 minutes. You know what? Maybe even 45 minutes, depending on if he only has 11 meetings in a day um, you know, with, uh, with KD here. Um, okay. So this is uh, how should, so it's a perfect segue, anonymous attendee. Um, how should sales teams approach the training process for chat GPT and other generative AI tools? Is it frontiered by sales enablement? Uh, is it uh, sales leadership? Um, and what would be your ideal way to train reps and managers? Higher scaled. Um, higher scaled would be the, the first one. But other than higher scaled, and just we already have the workshops, we have the custom GPTs, like you could do that. Um, but what would you do? And then you, because you did this, Katie, you, you did this, right? You brought this in and you know, to your org and you, you know, they, you're getting them to live and breathe it. So what, how, you know, and, and you've learned, what do you think is the right way? What's, if you're going to do this internally in-house, mm -hmm. what would you, what, what would your order of operations be? So order of operations is leader. And who to get involved too, sorry. So leadership first, meaning myself yes. and my leaders need to understand it. Okay. Then it's actually, it's not training them on how to use it. It's actually using it to help them do the things they've been trained on. So Ooh, it's, okay. Okay. It's like, what are the behaviors that I want them to be doing, or they've already been taught that then I can use AI to help enhance, right? So whether that's call scoring, whether that was role plays, whether that was research, right? It's like one of the easiest ones was like, all right, as I'm not trying to create a new behavior. What are all the questions that I see my team asking in Slack all day long? Right. So, you know, we built, you know, a tax GPT, right, right. to answer those questions, right? So I think it's less about training them on how to use, you know, generative AI on their own as much as how can you teach them to use it to do the things you want them to be doing. Then that can be either led by leadership or like taught by enablement, but enablement, everyone, I need you to hear me on this. Enablement, and if this gets me in trouble, I don't care. Enablement oh, yeah. is a support function. They shouldn't be frontiering anything, right? That should be coming from leadership and working in lockstep. But if it's not coming from leadership, it's not going to work. And so my shout out, Dana, one of the best enablement people I've ever had on, on my teams, like she and I worked on this all the time, right? Together, like how can we leverage this in training, building the onboarding plans and everything else? So that's my approach is leadership first. Then what is it I want it to enhance what we're already doing? Then it's training the team on how to do that, not just training them on how to use it in general. Um, I love that, man. And, and, and I think so. So and I'll, I'll try to kind of give you an even like a net and like an addition on that, uh, which is, you know, to, to kind of double down, which is instead of thinking of training on Gen AI and it's kind of stealing your concept, it's where's the bottleneck with the team today where they're doing a lot of, you know, kind of manual research or repetitive tasks, like where's your bottleneck in your sales org? And then how could AI help you as a part of how they work in their day-to-day. -day. Yeah. And if you start there, and again, for most people, it's like training and development, research and prep. Those are the ones that we've really honed in on. Um, I'll drop a link and these things are getting updated. Brian and I just sat down and like, we're working on um, these custom GPTs, like round two of these KD. Uh, and we'll have to do like a show and tell on these, but um Man, I, dude, I'm coming for gong, dude. I mean, like, it's not that difficult. It, it, like, generative AI is just so much better than any of this sales tech AI that, like, with very little effort, I can build some pretty good meeting analyzer stuff. So more, more on that. Check it out. If you're somebody who's, like, nerding out on this stuff, you should definitely 
sign up for our custom GPTs. Mm -hmm. They're okay. pretty cheap and yeah, well, um, will be massive productivity gains in terms of you being able to just go and like push buttons instead of having to know how to prompt like a. Expert. Actually, and I want to call that out real quick too, is this like again, training the team, it was to train them to use what we built. It was not yeah. training them to go out and do things randomly. It's like, all right, here's our research bot. Because why a lot of the, I'll say the big sales tools are starting to miss. And then on the, is they, they're missing context. Yeah. They, they don't, they have the context. So if even telling my reps to go use GPT to research, no, no, no. I'm going to build the GPT yeah, exactly. that is built for research and then train them on how to use it because it'll guide them the way I want them to do it. Yeah, exactly. It just makes it a lot easier. So you don't have to think about some of those things yeah. uh, as a part of it. So, all right, great question. I'm looking here. God, what are we, oh, here we go. Um, what industry, all right, we're getting some questions in here. Hold on. If you don't mind, use the Q&A. You guys mind just drop it in the Q&A because the chat gets going. Um, okay, I got one from Kate. Kate says, how are you seeing people use Gen AI to do better market research? Um, I'll go, I'll give you kind of a, I'll give you my quick, I mean, I, this, we could just spend the whole time just talking about like this, this yeah. use case. Um, uh, I'm going to say a couple different ways. One, and when we built some, some different custom GPTs around this, and we call it like discovery call prep bot. And so, you know, you, you can just give it a link to your website, um, give it a link to who you're meeting with. ChatGPT, you don't need to tell ChatGPT, it, it can immediately look and be like, oh, that's a marketing technology company you're trying to book a meeting with, right? So it already knows the industry. And then you can just ask very specific questions to it. Say, hey, here are, um, you know, I'm trying to, I've got a meeting coming up with this company. Um, here's the product that I sell. What are three trends happening for VPs of digital marketing for companies like this that I could try to tie, uh, I could try to like, you know, educate this person or, you know, kind of loop into my, uh, you know, uh, like the conversation, right? So it can pull in this really, really good um like insights to where like i could sit there i could look at the site vps of marketing blah 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 for this type of company what are they thinking about yeah or chat gpt can already get me like three really good ideas as part mm -hmm. of it yeah that's it uh, yeah. there's people, one there's the people side of it too but the relevancy yeah. side is it's where i feel like it, it crushes relevancy trends and connecting the dots that's the biggest is like hey what's relevant What's top of mind? What are the trends happening? And then how can you connect the dots across all those things? Because, all right, here's the trend, great. Here's the company info, great. Here's some insight on the industry, great. Connect the dots, create a thread between it. That's where it really comes together well. All right, Leo said, what industry uh, or industries kind of are showing the most resistance for integrating AI? I th I'm not really seeing any industry like leap toward it either. I'm not seeing like, <clears throat> you know, I'm sure tech salespeople are probably a little, I mean, probably what I've observed are ahead of the curve, probably tech salespeople um, because of the research piece in particular, because research mm -hmm. sucks. Um, but I mean, obviously we're kind of biased too, right? Like that's kind of the the world that we, we live in to some extent. Um, have you seen any like differences, KD, any industries that you're like, wow, like they're really running to Gen AI? Well, so to Leo's, I think it was the resistance. I think yeah. anything that's task related, people are running towards, right? And it is very task related, high repetition, high data that's there. Where I'm seeing the most resistance that I think is comical is anything that involves the idea of voice or the idea of empathy. Like for whatever reason, people are feeling like, well, no, like AI could never teach. AI oh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Never, okay. Like it's like, this could never be a, literally last night I was sending Jake something over that I came across and I was like, holy shit. Oh, dude, I, I did. I, by the way, I, I, I've got to show you the videos they made. They okay. were okay. They were right, okay. But again, okay. Now, now. Yeah. Oh, totally. A year from now. So I think people still think that this it, like is going to be resistant, that this could not be done with AI. And I think those are going to be people that are most shocked when it actually gets to that point that's where i see resistance is people say it can't do empathy and then i ask people well what is empathy they say well it's to care i said well how do you show you care oh well you listen you you ask good questions you support how many salespeople do that right? ask, <laughs> really actively listen let me see what you're thinking here yeah 
like that that to me is that's where i see the most resistance is people don't think this can happen via ai and i believe that it can and will yeah love it all right let's jump back in here all right we got a question from claire on linkedin here uh, let me pull back up linkedin that arcads arcads is currently broken we're working hard to get everything back up uh so the the site is down i was going to do a quick right. screen share and show everyone what it did but i'll send them to you so you can check them out um all right so we had claire claire's got a question her question is uh here uh i think katie touched on this earlier one of our key challenges is personalizing communications at scale mm -hmm. can chat gpt truly help people personalize at scale or is it really just faster one-to-one -one research great question yeah so it it can yes but you actually need to build a system to do this because if your reps are trying to do it one by one by one, it's almost just as slow. If you one don't already have a GPT built to make it happen faster, the key is you need to build again, the context of what do you want it to personalize around? And if you can build that script of like, okay, I want you to look up recent posts. I want you to look up any blogs. I want you to see if they're on any podcast. I want you like, you have to map it out first and then you can run a whole bunch of people through it. Get those, um, Jake built a really cool like snippet bot where it's like, just get the snippets. Like what are those personalization snippets? Take those and then you can plug them into your emails. But again, you need to train it on what personalization actually is and what to look for. Because otherwise you're gonna get very, very bland personalization that honestly reps already do. Hey, Jake, saw you're the CEO at, at Scaled. At Scaled, oh, I'm the I, CEO. Like, I can like, only like, imagine like, how busy. I'm gonna meet with you because I, you know what my job title is? Right, like, no value. Like, Here's what I'll say um, on, on this is I think people have lost sight of what customization and personalization, the difference. Yeah. Personalization means only that person could read it and it makes sense, right? So if I sent Jake an email and said, hey, you're the CEO, blah, 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 consulting, I can send that to any CEO if CEO. I change out the company. Yeah. But if I said, hey, Jake, saw you're the CEO of, of Scaled, First, I hope you took some time to celebrate that Chiefs win. But I do have to ask you, are you Team Taylor or Team Kelsey, right? Now, the same way there's Team Taylor and Team Kelsey, there's Team Automation, there's Team Manual. And I'm wondering which side you're on when it comes to your finances. <laughs> that was only, only Jake could read that email and it makes sense. That's right. personalization. and But you have to train how to do that. Uh, okay. All right. That's cool. That was a good um, email too, by the way. I'm just saying. That was, yeah, that's not bad. I, I, see, I, but see, and it's interesting because for me, I, I like business. I don't like it when people, like for me, you know, you got to do both. I like clever, but I'm probably going to archive. But then you come back with a business, AJ, CEOs, professional services, 2022 was probably kind of like, thir like rough, yeah. you know, 2023, probably better. Like in professional services, here's what we've seen. Um, you know, here's how I think I can help, yeah. you know, like, uh, knowing my business, you know what and I mean? Did, is did like, you catch it, though? it didn't stop at the chiefs. You connect the dots to it. Yeah, exactly. Manual automation, whatever it is, you have to personalization, just stopping at chiefs. Doesn't you have to connect the dots to the business case the business is exactly all oh, as always. Um, all right, man, we've got some good questions. Mike D what's up, Mike D um what is your current thinking or pov pov on gen ai for win loss analysis fucking no brainer right like eat like no brainer i mean you could you could immediately mike you could go to your salesforce you could go run a report for let's say q1 close one close loss pull in key fields like pull in um job title pull in in uh, company size industry um any other factors you have, like if you if you guys measure anything specifically, you could run a report, you know, let's say you pull in, pull in, you know, I don't know, 10 to 12 factors. You could literally just go upload that report right now and say, hey, give me the top three reasons why we're winning and top three reasons, like the top common things with, with win-loss. You guys could go literally run a win-loss win analysis that would have taken me and my team like three or four hours. You could probably go run it in about 10 minutes mm -hmm. right now, right? Yeah, and I would just I'll, I'll add on to this one. Tell it what to look for, though. Yeah, 
Yes, let, let definitely. Look Don't do, yeah. Right. Because otherwise it'll just give you what looks like the number one reason for loss was unresponsive. Yep. I can do that in a pivot yep. table. Yep. I don't need that. That, okay, great. That, that's a great call out. You know, you can say like, give it to me in table format, right? Of like, mm-hmm. how much more likely that's such a good call out. And this is for anybody, if you're new to generative AI in particular, or you've been dabbling and you're like, I want to go deeper, but I'm not feeling it. Um, I will tell you every time I get a bad answer, I know it's, I wrote a bad prompt every time. Yeah. It's like, yeah. I know for a fact that usually what's happened, like if I, 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 I'll run that report. And then like Katie said, I don't tell it all that other stuff. And then it's like, yeah, unresponsive. I'm like, oh crap. Okay, that was bad. Now let me rewrite this. Like, okay, I specifically want you to look at size, this, this, and this. I want you to group it by this and group it by this, and then tell me based on the groupings, more or less likely. It's that it's that concept of the prompting and like the more that you're just like a brain dump of like, okay, well, what's the criteria you're actually trying to ask for? It'll have a big impact. Massive. Yep. Yeah, that because that that's where I just I see people do things at that level. They're like, "Oh, Jake told me to go run a win loss analysis, so I downloaded my report and I put it in there, and here's what I got." It's like, "Well, yes, tell it what to look for. How do you want it presented? What's how do you do a win loss analysis? Type all that out and then put it in there. I want to know how often things were touched. Is there any connection across industry? Look for patterns around titles." Is there any rep that is a standout in this? Like all of those things are the keys. Oh yeah, that's yeah. You could you could slice that by rep. There, there's a lot you could do. Yeah, that's a really interesting. Okay, great. Now, like, help me to identify, you know, uh, performer. Why is Jake losing deals? Like, what's his mm-hmm. number one thing? And then, oh, Jake's consistently losing on budget. Okay, bu- help me to build a three week training program to where Jake um, can tell a better ROI story. Right? Like, you can just yeah. take this to like the next level too. It's like, it's not just the data. Kelsey wants to know whenever you're going to start talking about uh, AI in your sales leadership accelerator. Oh, I'm just waiting for Jake to give me the download of his LinkedIn course. So I can just use that. I'm not going to read it. Dude, you know what, man, it actually, so the chat GPT for sales course, um, I'll find it's it. They're giving their LinkedIn put together 30 AI courses are given away for free. So I will, Becca, can we try, if we can try to find the link, I'll drop that in there. Um, And yeah, dude, it's it's good. And I just like, recorded answer, a second one. To answer this yeah. though directly, Kelsey is like, I actually don't feel comfortable doing a module on this because it's changing so fast, right? I thought about doing a module, and it's like, well, but the, the module I've done three months ago would have been different. So it's more so like I want to start bringing people in, like Jake and other people, to talk about what's happening now. Whereas a module to me, I feel gets outdated so fast that then people are getting old news or old ideas. That's actually part of what's held me back a little bit from doing it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, we've got, we've got some content. We can actually, we've got that mm-hmm. workshop. Brian's doing that leadership one. We should talk about that. We could probably get that in there, sure. you know, we'll um, as a part of that um, game tape, listen to customers, Mike D Mike D see, you know what I love what's happening right now with Mike D here. Mike D is going down the chat GPD rabbit hole in his own brain. I can already see it. Yeah. You know, yes. he's like, Oh wait, if the win-loss can do that, and then it can do that, you're like, you can use CRM to ID the deals, then go back to the game tape. Well, see, I mean, like, look, you can even go further than that. You could say, okay, um, I also, you know, again, like, I'm trying to think of, like, how you would reverse, because you can't, you can't give it a link and tell it to, like, watch a video. It won't, it won't do that. Yeah. But there's probably a way you could have, like, a hidden field that, like, auto imports from whatever the transcript, and then you probably could do something where you're, and again, this, it would be a lot of data and you might even have just cause chat GBT has like a token limit. Um, uh, anyway, there's some other rabbit holes. Mike D now I'm going down the rabbit hole with you about like, you know, what you could actually do with this. Um, all right, Leo, Leo's always here, man. Leo, I appreciate you, man. Leo, Leo is always here asking really good questions. Um, so I appreciate you, Leo. Leo's got another one. Um, he basically says, we all love chat GPT, nevertheless, um, when do you think it becomes which Gen AI is the right one for such and such org? Yeah, I mean that one's that one's yeah, tough. I'll, like, I'll let you. Know, I'll, I'll toss that to you. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll guess take her, it. I'll, yeah, I'll take it, and then I actually have to have to jump here in a second here. But like, the, truthfully, like the yeah, because you got booked. Up, yeah, your day is all booked up. That's ridiculous. Usual. But like, it's knowing what you're looking for, and then just like anything, you just have to test it, right? Test what you're looking for across 
three or four different ones to see. This is why, again, why it starts at leadership. It's because you know what you want. You know what good looks like for these things. Testing it across those is going to be the key. But I'll just caveat this. Get started. Just get yeah. started, right? Like the differences, I have not found at this point now, the differences to be massively different. Whereas like, oh, I should have never have done this in Claude. I only should have done this in Jet. It's like, get started and then start to dabble with the different yeah, exactly. ones to see if it's better. Yeah. Whereas I don't want people getting overwhelmed with options and then they yeah. don't get started. Exactly. Um, all right, y'all. Appreciate you. Thank you very much. Have a great rest of your week. We will see you back here in a couple of weeks. I will see you all Monday. And yeah, just go start again, checking it out. Go check out those custom GPTs. We're going to be building some more stuff. Uh, and KD, I will see you on Friday. And we will let yeah. you guys know who won at golf as well, too. Let's go. Let's go. All right. Later, Thanks, y'all.